Welcome to Culture Fusion. Our special guest today is world-renowned DJ and producer, Private Ryan, with the release of his new rhythm, Turmeric Water. Welcome to the show. How are you doing? <laughs> I'm good. I'm good. How are you going today? I'm great. Now, you know, I have to ask you, have you actually tried turmeric water? <laughs> yes, actually, I, I, I do. I, I, I have had it before. And I, in naming this rhythm, that's actually what I was drinking. <laughs> okay. <laughs> no, no. <laughs> Now, I know you have a hot release for us today, but before we get into that, mm -hmm. could you tell us how you became a DJ? Um, just a general interest of, in, in music from, from, you know, from childhood. I think from maybe four, five, six years old, I was fascinated with the process of music, how to mix it, how to put it together. Um, and I used to play around my dad's record collection, you know, for those who remember what records are, you yeah. know what I'm saying? I'm young, but I, I was around music for a long time and um, I was able to to teach myself how to mix and play music and then that grew into into me um you know buying my own my own record collection and and and, and then playing in, in events you know you know from a very young age um to now to present where you know i i, I travel the world I, I did it i did it while, while being in college and everything too so it was just a balance and act and now i you know i've made a full-time um living from from being a dj event producer producer now to you know different things yeah now um how did you come up with the name Private Ryan? I think the public would like to know. <laughs> Private Ryan actually 
came, you know, you know, going back to, to, to when I used to DJ in a lot of different parties, there was actually a, a time when I was the, you know, the founder and lead DJ in this song called Detrimental. But when we used to play in the bass nightclub um, and the, the main DJs who are now known as Lord Hype and and, and the, the jugglers and the shells of the world, um, they used to call me to come and play in the club. Mm-hmm. And one day, um, Hyper Hopper, you know, um, he he sat in a commercial and bring in the, the youngest number one recruit, mm-hmm. Private Ryan. So it, it was a play off of the movie and then that okay. just stuck. So I actually have to credit him for for being the one who kind of gave me the, the name. Yeah, so when, that, you, <laughs> so when you think they're going to upgrade you to general? <laughs> you know, that's always a question I get, you know, I'm not sure. <laughs> I'm not quite. I'm not quite sure. You know, I'm looking for that 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 promotion, boy. I'm looking for that promotion. Always a private boy. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> now you know, as you mentioned earlier, you you began putting out records. Um, sorry, mixes back in 2006 mm-hmm. as a college student at the Florida International University. What prompted yes. you to start doing that? Um, it was it was a void. It was it was basically um from being away and understanding that. Uh, people were disconnected from their culture and the music and, and just they had a lack of knowledge. So when you're in that world over there, um, you know, we used to be in all the hip hop parties and, and, and those things. And there was no show because there was no online radio. There was no social media. There was nothing then. Um, so then it was a, a situation where the question needs to be answered. How do we how do I educate the people um, with, with, with the music from the Caribbean? And also, like, even in terms of going back for carnival, um when people were traveling back they had no way of learning all the music that came out so i was like you know what i'll make the mixes that people get to know everything that that came out and um and so that's what really prompted me and then it also you know it was an opportunity for people to to learn my skill as a dj uh you know to be able to mix not just the caribbean music but also like i could play their stuff too so i could play the hip-hop and 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 the dance and the Haitian music and the r&b and everything and that's what i did so what what did you study by the way? I did business, but I specialize in marketing. In you know, so I I I I um I love the business side of things and the creative side of things. Okay. Um. Now you're currently under new management. You know, you recently signed to TTMG, and the goal is mm-hmm. to make a global impact musically. And you're also working on a world tour. Could you tell us how that partnership came about, and when could we expect you to begin touring? Well, when COVID's over is the first question, is the first answer. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> when, well, hopefully um, the you know, turmeric rhythm might help. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, you know, uh, the, the, the vision is always to spread the music and, and the culture and everything worldwide. So um, I will begin touring when it's the right temperature to do so. Um, you know, everything in its time. Um, this time, you know, has given me the opportunity to to work and craft a catalog of music that I'm excited to share with the world um, eventually, um, you know, starting with, of course, you know, it, it didn't start here, you know, there was a lot, there was the Road to Concrete, and there was Feel Your Love, Reason to Love, yeah. um, X Games, all those songs, and then, you know, I, I came this year with the Sweet Tooth Symphony, House of Calypso Rhythm, which is doing really well with Kiss, Sun Kiss that had Adam and now the new, it was always Battalion music, but now people are going to know, like, yeah. the signature sound that is going to come you know from me and, and the creative aspect of it so um in terms of the partnership with, uh, with top tier umar who is the head of um top tier he was he he's somebody who used to book me in howard um university and um the dc area so i've known him for a while mm-hmm. and you know he approached me to, to to kind of uh you know come on board and uh to to to, to, to help facilitate certain aspects of 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 my career and stuff so we had a conversation and so yeah you know i'll be working alongside him to to make some things happen over time so so you know just yet to, everything is yet to be seen as it unfolds yeah so now you're the ceo and creator of soca brainwash which you launched back mm-hmm. in 2014 and over the years it has transformed into the biggest global soca dj festival in the world could you tell us yes. about its inception? Yeah. So Soka Brainwash started off as a mix. Uh, it, you know, just going back on the idea of me educating people with music. Um, Soka Brainwash is, is exactly that. You brainwash people with with the music of, of that particular year so that they could learn it. Um, and so I always wanted to create, from it being a, such a signature mix for me, I wanted to create something that, that was signature in the event landscape you know, just playing off of the, the Soka Brainwash name. And as a result, 
you know, I created this this festival, you know, themed event mm -hmm. that that travels the world. But the focus, whereas it will, um, a lot of other events focus on the artists, mm -hmm. I decided to make it something that focuses on the DJs. Yeah. Um, it is a forum for the DJs internationally and locally to to be able to play for an audience that is very receptive a, to the music, and and B, it gives us the opportunity to show our our power in the dynamic of, of of the culture as well too because you know the artists have you know have a lot of shows that they do but a lot of people they tend to forget that the djs are the heart and soul of a lot of the events and even bringing the music forth bringing it to life mm -hmm. and doing these things so i decided to keep it as a dj show mm -hmm. um so so that's what soccer brain is and the flagship is in trinidad on kind of on saturday it is you know it's something that has a lot of different things in it you know the food the drinks the decor you know the, the, the you know the the the, the world you know, at your disposal in terms of the world uniting at Soka Brainwash, which is how I branded it the first year, the world united Soka Brainwash. And we look forward to when the world reunites at Soka Brainwash, yeah. you know? All right. So um, how do you come up with the themes for Soka Brainwash? Because I know you're very hands-on on the creative process and the logistics yeah. that go behind creating such an event. At time, you know, I just sit and I map out what, you know, would be interesting and, and think about, about, you know, what could be different. I, I hate to do the same thing twice. So, mm -hmm. you know, I, I look, uh, you know, internally and, and really build out a map of, of how I want to tell the story of Soko Greenwash over the next few years. Of course, COVID kind of put a stop on it. Uh, but, you know, looking at the, the horizon you know and when we get out of this you know to bring to life some of the ideas that you know been been thinking of yeah. um it'll be interesting and it'll be fun yeah now would you consider possibly doing a soccer brainwash in tobago you know you have a lot of fans here so. possibly um yeah. the only thing is that so many people from tobago come, come to i actually have a college friend that oh. actually every year buys a lot of tickets um for soccer brainwash Trinidad. you know a lot yeah. a lot of tobagoans that love tobago oh. um they come to they come to Soka Brainwash and and have a good time. So it's possible. It's just very difficult. The, the reason it's very difficult because after Carnival Saturday, then is then straight into the heart of yeah. your Carnival Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Ash Wednesday, and then Thursday I do my cool down thing in Trinidad. So it's just timing. You know, yeah, timing you know, is a hell of a thing. A separate date for us. <laughs> yeah, I'll have to I'll have to give Tobago some love during the Carnival season. So I'll, I'll figure it out. Okay. I'll figure it out. All right. Um. <laughs> Now, what do you think from your perspective as a DJ it would take to make soca music more sh mainstream as reggae is? One is consistency um, in terms of releases. Uh, I think it, it's important that we don't only release music for the, the carnival season. Mm -hmm. While I understand the nature of the, the beast of carnival is that the music is fueling the festival. Which is very unique to you know to any other genre. There's no genre that fuels a a one season festival, and and that is why the music comes in a in a glut between yeah. the months of November and January. Other industries space out the releases. If an artist is releasing an album here, you know they'd be like, okay, well you're gonna release, then I'm gonna release like maybe a little while it's But in soca, it's just like yeah. everybody is trying to 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 get in. Um, so a couple of things happen there, you know, sometimes quality is sacrificed, um, mm -hmm. competition also, you know, created this, this monster of, of artists, not necessarily having fun with the music, but they, they, they created music strictly for competition. Yeah. And what you realize is that sometimes when you make the, the music strictly for competition, it, it stifles the quality of it because you made it for one purpose as opposed to a world purpose of, yeah. of making the music last. Yeah. Um, and that's why you find that when you look at, um, you know, you go back in time to like old soca and even like early 90s and 2000s when they were more having fun with the music, yes. you got a lot more creativity. Mm -hmm. um, another aspect which people are afraid to, to, to talk about is unity. Mm -hmm. Behind the scenes, the artists, the producers um, and everybody need to come together mm -hmm. to create something great. Yes. And when you have a fragmented industry, mm -hmm. it does not... It does not breed, you know, this forward thinking movement and uh, um, that that would take us further. Mm -hmm. You know, thing is, even with reggae, um, <laughs> they, they stand behind, you know, dancehall and reggae to the end, you know, yeah. we are Trinidadians and even, you know, the Caribbean need to be very proud of 
what our festival is, what it stands for, and and look at 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 how we could take the music further. And then you know it comes down to musical content. Mainstream soca is something that it's it's ex an experience music. It's memories music. We associate our happiness with the music, with the memories of the experience. Um, so what happens is is that if let's say for example in a song, which of course you know everybody knows in a song, mash up the place, the road, and a truck, yeah. right? somebody who has never experienced carnival mm -hmm. would not necessarily understand what that means yeah. whereas if you that's why for uh just to use a, an example of a song that went global tempted to touch and turn me on mm -hmm. uh speaking about global themes yes. that everyone no matter what they can they, they, they can process what the song is talking about and and so they could dance it yeah. and i'm not saying that everybody should try to do that but it's just about balance. It's like we can create these songs that that don't necessarily focus directly on the festival, but make fun music and just it's soak up. Yeah. You know, that's what I think. Right. So, um, you now you also have number one podcast in the Caribbean. Could you tell us a bit more about your podcast? Yeah, the the, the mixes have grown to to to, to uh, quite a number of downloads now because you know you know it's I think the last I checked was forty five million. Um, downloads and streams and that isn't even taken into consideration how people who people who've shared it with friends not via my channels um um the youtube shares and a, a lot of different things where where people have been able to access the mix because some people do actually do repost the mixes so it's actually the numbers actually um bigger than that and um so people look forward to a lot of the signature mixes i made over the years which which you know is exciting because i still do them um, no matter what the travel schedule or whatever it is, I, I still put the effort into making the DJ mixes and giving the world some music because the music, you know, will make yeah. people happy and, and take us through whatever times we're going through. Yes. Um, now, what advice would you give young up-and-coming DJs who would like to translate this skill into a business venture as you have successfully done? Um, you know, every... every um, everybody's not the same so understanding that that while the core fundamentals of of success are the same one of the major ones is work ethic mm -hmm. um there's there are no shortcuts to success you have to put in the work um so for any young young upcoming dj producer or anyone who's looking to get into business and you know in general mm -hmm. you know your work ethic is going to do wonders because because a person with great work ethic can pass someone who has talent mm -hmm. which is the truth but somebody with talent with no work ethic they, they, they stay stagnant and that's why you see sometimes that's what happens yeah. you know um in terms of you know business is to keep is is, is to put your put your house in order mm -hmm. um in terms of, of creating a structure that's sustainable because you you don't want to do all this work and then you know there's nothing there you know to show at the end of the day you can't put food on the table for your family um so you want to make sure that you put your business structures in place um, you want to make sure that you you protect your 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 assets. Meaning, for example, um, you know you look at the legal aspects of of you know having a good DJ name that is not in these times. You don't want to to, to have a, a DJ name that is like you know that 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 may seem like it incites violence yeah. or it it discriminates. So making strategic decisions about your branding, yeah. um, and and that's another important word. Branding and talent are two different things. Your talent is what you can physically do on on stage, and that or what whatever you say. But your brand is what speaks to the world. Your brand is is what you know the corporate world would want to touch you. Your brand is what makes people come back to you because there are several good DJs. But what does your brand say? Yeah. You know, yeah. um, in understanding that, you know, you could frame. Once you understand what you want to do, who you are, and what um, you're trying to accomplish in terms of answering those questions, that will then form, you know, your decisions in terms of what your brand is and how to go forward. So that's my advice. Okay. Now, I'm an athlete, and it's a question I ask all my guests, mm -hmm. and you're my fourth guest on the show. What is your favorite sport? I would say my favorite sport. Um, I am a... I am a I watch sports passively only because of my time, yeah. but I will say that the, in my opinion, the best sport in the world is football. Mm -hmm. um, you know, and I watch it, especially the major tournaments and those things. Mm -hmm. And I also like, especially when it comes down to Olympics and even passively, um, I love track and field. 
you know i yeah <laughs> nice. i think yeah the kind yeah it's, yeah it's it's one of those things that i like to watch as well all right so let us get us let us get into your new release turmeric water yes right, yes yes yes, yes. I'm playing up. Let me go back in. Eyes are fun enough. See that be somebody where you get. See that be somebody where you get. Almighty Father. Bless you with a body that you get. Bless you with a body that you get. Oh, Baby, would you tell me what you like me? Why you come follow me? Step a ride like a bike. You is a green light, y'all. Me never go one jam. I'm me begging you for more. Need that now, not tomorrow. Let me tell you how the thing go. Half one jam. The one you have it ever too normal. One jam. I'm me begging you for two more jam. One jam. Y'all, I'm not leaving. Say I'm not leaving. That's right, guys. It's yeah. another turmeric Let water with us. Let me tell you, say. DJ Private Ryan. I y'all, me never go one jam. I'm me begging you for more. Need that now. I like this one too. Tell you what. <laughs> um, you you have it ever too normal. One jam. I'm me begging you for two more jam. One jam. So when you ask him, you're sure, boy, you're sure. Yeah. One jam. Yellow tape, girl, I need caution. One jam. But I'm addicted to emotion. One jam. Uh. And I want to know your name. Girl, the way you I know, girl, can step in your lane. One jam, I'm me so addicted, I keep coming again. We need some turmeric yeah. shots for this. I see. I see. It was turmeric water you, you were picking up there, you know? <laughs> no, no, no. Regular water. Regular. <laughs> yeah, I didn't work. Slow my head like banana. You have the right banana. Your attitude is so rude. I love all these things. Try guys, get familiar. Yeah, lady. I want to give you nice, nice, baby. I go home back. I got home back. 
Right, so what you mean? Kelly's so young and already talking about when she gets her first job taking out a mortgage with TTMF at two percent. She knows about two percent, yes, two percent with no down payment as a first time homeowner and the lowest rate on the market. We would not have to dip into our savings to set her up. Where she get all this brains from? Her mother, of course, TTMF from here to home. You can now get whatever you need whenever you need it anywhere in Tobago with Tapago. Your meals, medication, groceries, and shopping all delivered.